As you might have noticed, Manu and I recently are looking more and more into Blender because we think it's a brilliant companion to Houdini. And for that very reason, I've been going through a very popular YouTube tutorial recently, building a donut inside of Blender. And this tutorial helped me a lot in figuring out my first steps inside of Blender. However, occasionally I was thinking about, mm, I would do this differently in Houdini, because at some points the workflow in Blender seems very manual labor focused, which is absolutely justified for certain tasks. And by no means do I want to badmouth Blender here. It's a brilliant program and a super companion to Houdini, as I mentioned. I just thought about how I would solve different problems differently in a fully procedural program, such as Houdini. So I thought, why not do the same thing and build a donut with icing and sprinkles, but this time fully procedural. So let's get going. So as soon as you start Houdini, this is what you're confronted with. Let's go over the basic program layout. This is in the network view. That's where we're going to build our node networks mainly. Here is the parameter tab where we'll dial in the parameters of said nodes down here. And this is your viewport. Navigation is pretty standard, industry standard. So holding down Alt and pressing the left mouse button will tumble. Pressing the right button will zoom and pressing the middle mouse button will pan the viewport. Also, if for some reason your viewport view is messed up and you want to center it again on the origin, you press space and H for home, and this will bring back this view here. Up here, you've got a bunch of shelf tools, which we're gonna ignore for now. You can think of them as presets, dropping down a certain set of nodes down here. And over here, you have your different tool handles. In addition, you have your viewport options here. And also when you're over the viewport with your mouse and hit D for display, it brings up the viewport configuration. Houdini has different contexts, and for this tutorial, series, the relevant ones will be the OBJ, the object context, where we're going to build geometry, the matte context, where we're going to build shaders, and the out context, where we're going to set up rendering. As we want to start building geometry, let's start with the OBJ context. And in here, I want to drop down a torus by pressing tab and then starting typing torus. You can see we already found the torus here and Either I can press enter or click on this and then select where I want to place this node here. And we are still on our OBJ level. And this node here is a wrapper for a bunch of nodes or a single node that's inside that is generating those polygons here. So let's dive inside there, just hitting enter or I for in. And we can see this. We are now in our OBJ context in our torus network. And this single node here is generating the torus. Let's zoom out a bit and drag this over. And in here, I can set up my torus geometry. And suddenly this is very coarse. It's got very few polygons. So let's increase the number of rows and columns here to say 64 by 144, resulting in this high detail torus. Next, by default, Houdini does not create normals. I mean, it calculates intrinsic normals to do the shading here, but we're not saving normals on our geometry. And you will see this throughout Houdini. You'll have to take care of a bunch of low level stuff yourself. Typically for artists coming from other tools such as Maya or Cinema 4D, this seems a bit cumbersome at the beginning because normally as an artist working in another DCC, you'd be used to that certain DCC taking care of this low level stuff for you and not bothering you with it. However, usually those DCCs also do not give you the flexibility and possibility to dial in those low level details and low level attributes as well. So let's create normals here using a normal SOP. And if I press shift and enter now, this node will be attached to our torus. By the way, I call this normal SOP and SOP stands for surface operator. So here we're creating a geometric surface. So Houdini calls this nodes surface operators. Now, if I click this button here, you can see these are my normals. And by the green color as a Houdini user, I know that these are vertex normals. So if we zoom in, we can see that each polygon has four normals attached to it. That's because each vertex of the polygon has a single normal. And in Houdini, a vertex is not a point. A vertex just stores which polygon corner, so to say, is attached to which point in space. So if I highlight the point display here, you can see there's a single point to which four vertices are attached. And each vertex in this case is part of a different polygon. For later, I want to use these normals to move around my points in space. And to do so, I want to have those normals rather on my points than on my vertices. So let's select add normals to points. And now you can see that those four normals are now just single normal that is stored on this individual point here. And this is something important in Houdini because although you are used to normals being stored on points or on vertices, in Houdini, you are able to store any data on points, vertices, polygons, or on the whole geometry stream. So you can create your own data, storing, for example, population density or an airport code, if, for example, you'd want to visualize maps. And another way to access this data is in the geometry spreadsheet up here, where you have those four modes here, points, vertices, primitives, those usually are polygons or lines, splines, and detail, which is the whole geometry stream. And in points mode here, we can see we have now six individual numbers stored for each point. Three are called P, P, X, Y, and Z. That's the points position. And three are called N. 
and x, y, and z. And that's the normal. So what we're doing here is we are storing two vectors on each point. It's not relevant for now, but just keep in mind, this is what forms the basis of Houdini's awesome powers. Okay, let's disable the normal display and the point display again. And let's select a few points around this area here, where we want to push our torus towards the inside to shape it a bit more like a donut. In this case, I will use a group node, which I'll attach to our normals here. Select points because I want to group points. I'll disable the base group and enable keep in bounding regions. And now that lets me specify either a bounding box or a bounding sphere within which Houdini will select all the points. So let's increase the size a bit and meanwhile decrease the size here to just select this single line of points like this. Next, I want to procedurally paint a weight attribute that drives how far those points on my donut will be pushed inside. For that, I'm going to use a node that's called attrib create, and I'm going to call my attribute weight. Make sure it's a point attribute, should be of size one, so just a single float value. The default value is zero, that's fine, and only for my group that I just created and lazily called group one, which is bad practice, only for those I want to set the attribute value to one. So we're not seeing anything here. Let's just highlight this node, go to the geo spreadsheet here and just have a look at this weight column here and sort it. And I can see, yes, I've got both zeros and ones. However, I want to visualize this. So let's go back to the viewport and drop down a visualize node, which we're going to attach to the attribute create here, highlight this. And in the visualizers tab, let's select our weight attribute and set this to be displayed as a ramped attribute. If I drag this down, I can choose the colors which are displayed, but in this case, that's fine for me. So this now is a really, really small band of points whose weight is set to one. So only these points will be pushed in later. However, I want to smooth this out a bit so that it kind of blurs out into the rest of the donut. So we only just push the adjacent points a bit and this whole thing moves a bit smoother later. And for that, I'm going to use the attribute blur, which I will set to blur our weight attribute and crank up my blurring iterations until I see something that I like. For example, 24 iterations. So just as within Photoshop, within an image, I blurred out this value over my mesh now. Okay, let's now move those points whose weight attribute is bigger than zero. And for that, I could either use a bit of scripting, which I'm very much a fan of. The scripting language in Houdini called Vex is very powerful and very fast, which allows you to write custom functions that enable you to pull off effects that would otherwise be very, very hard to do. However, as this is a beginner tutorial, and I'm aware that most of you guys are scared by a single line of code, let's instead use VOPS, that is visual scripting. As I want to move around points, I'm going to use a point VOP. A VOP is a VEX operator and I will attach this to the attrib blur here and let's move the visualizer down below our point VOP like so. And within this point VOP I can build scripts by clicking together a few nodes. So let's do that. Dive in there. These two nodes are always there by default. They are a global input and a global output. And these are just parameters that Houdini thinks are quite handy when it comes to working with points, namely the point's position, velocity, force, age, life, the color, which is called CD for color diffuse, N for the normal, and a bunch of others as well as the outputs. So by default, we already have outputs here for our position, velocity, force, color, and our normal. However, we don't have any inputs for our weight that we created here. So let's create an input for that. And the note we're going to use for that is called bind. So we're going to bind our weight attribute, which of course is called weight and which is a float. So through this slot here, I can now access each point's weight attribute. So all those notes that we're going to string together in here will be executed on each point of the mesh at the same time. And the nice thing about this construct that you build in here is it automatically is multi-threaded. So what we want to do is we want to move those points along their normal. And for that, we can use the displace along normal VOP here, which takes our current point position and our current point normal, as well as our displacement amount. And for now, I'm just going to use our weight as our displacement amount. And the output will be our displaced point position and the displaced point normal, like so. So if we highlight this node here, the displaced normal node, we can now dial in the scale of our displacement until we get something that we like. For example, something like this with those outer areas with the higher weight being pushed in a bit. Yeah, and I'm kind of happy with that. So let's go up one level again by hitting U for up and we're back in our tree that we just built. And although our torus now looks a bit more like a donut as it's being pushed in here, it looks very regular and very smooth. So let's jag it up a bit using what's called a mountain node, which is there to distort our geometry a bit. And that is a bit too far. So let's dial back its height here, maybe to 0 0.1 and let's play with our element size here a bit until we arrive at something that we quite like. Down here, you have further settings for your noise. So feel free to tweak that to your liking. Yeah, maybe something like that. Finally, what I want to do is color this donut. And for that, I would like to use the weight attribute, but I want to make those colors a bit different than they are in this visualizer. And I actually want to write out these colors onto my individual points and color them. And for that, I will use a color node, which I'll attach after the mountain, go in here and set our color type to ramp from attribute. And we want to use our weight as this ramps input. And also our weight 
has been blurred out quite a bit. So let's adjust the input range, maybe like this. And in here, let's dial in a few colors that are more akin to a donut. So let's start maybe with a darker brown, going over to a lighter brown, to an even lighter brown, and then to this white here. Maybe a bit dark, but you get the idea. So you can tweak that until you arrive at something that you really like. And finally, maybe for rendering later, I want to subdivide this even more just to make sure that's high res enough. Although I think this is really high res already, but just for the sake of showing it off, here's our subdivide node. Just wire that in here. And it's already set to one additional subdivision. So that's our really high res donut initial dough geometry. And now that we have our dough part finished here, let's talk about the icing, which we're going to do in the next tutorial. If you like what we do and want to support us or even want to gain access to more in-depth courses covering Houdini, you might want to consider supporting us on Patreon. And to everyone supporting us already, thanks so much, guys. Without you, we couldn't do what we do. So really, thanks a lot. With a very, very special thank you going out to Gearbox Studio Quebec, important-looking pirates, Chris Hebert and Rafik Anadol. Thanks so much, guys.